that were with him from Baal of Judah to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts that dwelleth between the cherubims. And they set the ark of God upon a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab that was in Geber. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, drove the new cart. And they brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was at Geber, accompanying the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all manner of instruments made of fair wood, even on harps and on psalteries and on timbrels and on cornets and on cymbals. And when they came to ne nation's threshing floor, Uzzah put forth his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen shook it. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God smote him there for his error. And there he died by the ark of God. Today I want to title this sermon, uh, Handling the Glory of God, as we continue with our theme for this prayer and fasting, this 21 days of prayer and fasting, which is show me thy glory. So as we seek God, as we seek the face of God, and as we want God to show us his glory, we must know how to handle it once we get there, because we are in danger of being stricken with death. Amen. And so we see the first thing, the story of Uzzah is one that is an example to all generations. And first thing we see, there was disobedience. Uh, David, beforehand we see, he went and he consulted his leaders. And he said, should we go and get the Ark of the Covenant? The Ark of the Covenant is what called, carried the presence of God. And Previously, we see David was always consulting God, but this time he consulted men. And one thing we need to realize when it comes to deal with the glory of God, we cannot consult man what is the way forward. It's not time to consult your fellow men. You have to download what God is saying. It's time to understand what, the, what is the word of the hour. And so the disobedience comes because David then comes and instructs them, put the Ark of the Covenant on a cart. That's the first thing we find out in Numbers chapter 4. Let's run there quickly. Numbers chapter 4. How the Ark was to be carried. From verse 1 it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Take the psalm of the sons of Kohath from the sons of Levi. So we see from the sons of Levi, the Levites, we find the sons of Kohath. So God has chosen a tribe, and now he has specified it down to a family. So Kohath and his sons, and it says from the sons of Levi, after their families, by their house of their fathers, from 30 years old and upward. So it was just not any son. Remember, we're talking about manifestation of the sons of God. So not just any son. We're talking of people who are 30 and above. And remember, Christ started his ministry when he was 30 years old. So there's a revelation in turning 30. I hope you get that. Okay. So just not any son, not any child. So not just anyone can handle the glory of God. That's why we said we owe it to yourself to mature in God. You owe it to yourself to mature in your walk with God. Your salvation has to mature that we may reach a place of manifesting into a son of God. So, so that you can handle the glory of God. As he's saying, show me your glory. Our theme, show me your glory. We can't be crying for the glory of God when you're still a child, when you're still a babe, when you ought to be teachers, you are a babe in Christ. And yet you cannot handle the glory of God. So these were the ones to carry the ark of God. Those who are the sons of Kohath. And in verse 15, it tells us, And when Aaron and his sons have made an end of covering the sanctuary and all the vessels of the sanctuary, as the camp is 
to set forward after that, the sons of Kohath shall come to bear it. So they shall come to carry the ark of the covenant on their shoulders. But they shall not touch, they shall not touch any holy thing lest they die. These things are the burden of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation. Last night we talked about the tabernacle of Moses where we saw the outer courts and the inner courts, the brazen altar, all that, and the lever, all the way to the altar of incense, to the, the golden lampstand, all that, the mosaic tabernacle. And we find this Ark of the Covenant was in the Holy of Holies. And it's what will have the glory of God will come and ascend. Amen. So now let's see David's mistake over here. And uh, Uzzah and Abinaba and their mistakes. So their first disobedience, we realize that you cannot have disobedience when you're dealing with the glory of God. So the first one, they put it on a cart. They put it on an ox. An ox which shows the strength of man. The wisdom of man, your strength, your wisdom is foolishness before God. Your wisdom has no place in the glory of God. Your wisdom has no place in the presence of God. Your wisdom has no place in the things of God. And in this cut, we see it represents the natural man, the carnal man. Bishop has taught us of three men, the carnal man. The natural man and the spiritual man. The natural man is those who are not saved. They're outside there. Those are natural men. You tell them something, drink of my blood of Christ, they will wonder what are you saying. That's the natural man outside there. That's why it's so hard to evangelize, but we must evangelize. But the carnal man, you are in church, but you've refused to grow. You have refused to be worded. You have refused to learn the word of God. You have refused to live the word of God. The Holy Spirit is not manifesting in you. We are not seeing the fruits of the Spirit of God in you. You are carnal. It says, are you not carnal? When you have strifes among you, when you have envies among you, when you are jealous, when you are driven by jealousy, you are carnal. When you are driven by argument after argument with your neighbor, you're carnal. Are you not carnal? And so this carnal man cannot hold the glory of God. Amen? So the priests were to carry the ark on their shoulders, but they put it on an ox and on a cart. You cannot do things in your own way. Things have to be done in God's way. There must be an order. The order of God, precept upon precept, line upon line, for us to download and partake of the glory of God. Show me your glory, we'll cry. Show me your glory, but we do not know the order of handling the glory of God. God in his utmost power, in, it, in his utmost glory, he's glorious, but you, a mortal man, cannot understand it unless you understand the order of God and his ways. And that's where we find the greatest disobedience was not following the order of God. They did not follow the order of God. God said, let the sons of Kohath. The sons of who were to carry? The sons of Kohath were to carry. And all of a sudden, it's on an ox and on a cart. And so they reached the threshing floor, like we've seen. Before we reach the threshing floor, we see Uzzah, as they came to the threshing floor, and they, it went kidogo like this. And Uzzah tried to put it, isianguke, let it not fall. And immediately God struck him. Uzzah presumed that his hand was less defiling than the ground the ark was going to fall on. He presumed his hand was, less hol was more holy than the ground the ark was going to fall on. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 12. Proverbs chapter 14, 
verse 12 puts it very clear. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The presumption of Uzzah is what brought his death. His presumption of that he can handle the glory of God. His presumption that his way was better, that the glory of God was going to fall on the earth. Like it was going to hit the ground. So he put his hand. So he saw his way of going to handle the glory of God was better. There is a way that seemeth good to a man. Didn't it seem good that let this fall, let it not fall. There is a way that seemeth good to a man, but it's, his end thereof is death. Is death. 1 Corinthians 1, 29. No flesh should glory in his presence. No flesh shall glory in the presence of God. Uzzah brought his flesh. If it didn't fall, we would all clap for Uzzah. Ah, Uzzah, you are a lot. The glory of God didn't fall down. You are doing good. He brought his flesh where it was not needed. You cannot bring your flesh. You have to crucify your flesh. You cannot bring your flesh in the presence of God. No flesh shall glory in the presence of God. Wasn't Uzzah about to take the glory? If it didn't fall, ah, brother Uzzah, Deacon Uzzah, you have done well. The ark of the covenant was about to fall. And it was reflex, reflex. It would have been a big shame. It was about to fall down. You have spared us shame. But that was not what God said. Amen. Secondly, we see the sin of familiarity. You'll find the Ark of the Covenant was in Abinadab's house for 20 years. Now, Uzzah and Ahio were the sons of Abinadab. So they had seen the Ark of the Covenant in their home for 20 years. 20 good years. They were seeing it there. Huh? They had gotten used to the glory. They had gotten used to the presence. Isn't that the Christian today? I've been saved for 20 years. So you will now holela, holela in the presence of God. Holela, holela. You know I've been a pastor for 20 years. Holela, holela. Una jibeba hivo, hivo. You know I've been in the praise team 10 years. You know I've been an usher for 20 years. So what? The sin of familiarity. It shall lead to death. We must always see that the glory of God cannot be taken on a familiar level. So Uzzah seeing that, oh, I'm used to seeing this thing. That's why, that's why he could see. He could touch it. That's why he was okay. Like, ah, tunai beba tunai peleka. Jerusalem. Let us take the, ah, we take it, ah, finally. Let's take the ark, of, let's take it. He did not seek to see, oh, where are the sons of Kohath to come and carry this? Where are the sons of Kohath to come and bear the Ark of the Covenant? But he bore it on himself. Him and Ahio saw it upon themselves to come and uh, let's take it. So they put it on ox, they put it on cart, and they drove it out, both of them. Uh -huh. Do you see, see? Because we've been dwelling with the ark, we've been dwelling with the presence, we've been dwelling with the glory. The sin of familiarity comes in. And so we lose the reverence. We lose the reverence of a holy God because we are so familiar. In the days of our father, they had not seen Christianity for long, for long and for long. They, 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 they were the ones who started it. But us, now this generation was born into Christianity. You are born. Your, your, your mother was in labor when she was on the pulpit. Then you are born into it. And then you become familiar. You become familiar. Oh, have you ever tried uh, witnessing to a Kenyan? I'll say a Kenyan because we are the, I say you are, we are the most witnessed country. Because every hundred meters you'll find a church in this country where there are people 
where there's a city, where there's a town. Every 100 meters, just look at us. This 100 square meters, there are like four churches. Very witness people. But the sin of familiarity. If you start witnessing to somebody, ah, najua, najua, yesu, najua, amini lizaliwa. By then, lizaliwa church. I was brought up in church. You're like, oh, so it's your decision not to, yeah, 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 these things. I know them, I know these things. Me who praise our God, by the way. Huh? Huh? Sin of familiarity. We are handling the presence and the glory of God as we see fit. As we see fit. Because we have been here, we've seen it, we've seen all his presence, we've tasted, we've seen miracles, we've seen demons being cast. Now what more is there, we think? What more is there so now we can bring in our flesh as we please? We can handle it. We can handle it. But no, there is an order. God is a God of order. Amen. What is the way forward? Stand to First Chronicles, chapter fifteen, verse two. We have come to a place of repentance, a place of seeing that you're wrong, and then how shall we move forward? First Chronicles, chapter fifteen. David tries again. Because now it has cost, it cost, imagine that on his burden, it cost him Musa. Then David said, none ought to carry the ark of God but the Levites. For them hath the Lord chosen to carry the ark of God and to minister unto him forever. Mm. So he has noticed, uh, last time I did it wrong. Now this time, please, let's do it right. Let the, let the Levites come because those are the ones God has chosen. Verse 13, it says, For because you did it not unto the first, the Lord our God made a breach upon us, for that we sought him not, af not after the due order. That is First Chronicles chapter 15, verse 13. Verse, we're in 13 now. 13, it says, For because you did it not unto the first... Hmm, the first time. The Lord our God made a breach upon us for that we sought him not after the due order. So there's order. God is a God of order. This holela, holela does not exist. We are the army of God. We are the army of God. God is a God of order. Verse 14. So the priests and the Levites sanctified themselves to bring up the ark of the Lord God of Israel. So what is the way forward? It's going through sanctification. If we want to see the glory of God, we must go through a sanctification. It's not enough that you are a priest, that you are a chosen generation, a peculiar people. It's not enough. We must be sanctified. Before they came to handle the glory of God. Before they came to do their duty that God had told them to do. Yes, this time I'm a priest. This time I'm saved. This time I'm in love with Christ. This time I'm walking as I should. But before you proceed to handle of the glory of God, you must go through sanctification. A full sanctification in your body, your mind, your soul, and in your spirit. That's why we're in 21 days of prayer and fasting. Show me your glory. Your body is going through a natural detox, a natural sanctification. Your mind, you sanctify your mind. You sanctify your soul. Everything that you listen to goes into your soul. Everything that you do goes into your soul. You have to reach a point where nothing about you, everything about you is towards and only for the maker. Because you're sanctified. This was their job. Before they did their job, they had to reach a point where they come clean, a bride without spot, without wrinkle. As I ministered yesterday, you are a bride at all times. You are a bride who is always in knowledge of the groom, the feelings of the groom. You are a bride of Jesus Christ. You represent the bridegroom wherever you go. 
Have you ever seen a bride who is not a jashuka nyuele? Holela, holela. You wonder, eee, and you're getting married to that man. He can't even take care of you now. Hmm? You are constantly representing the bridegroom. Constantly. There's no time to have a relapse. Because you're coming to handle of the glory of God. Amen? Hallelujah. Sanctification. We must go through a full sanctification. We must understand what it is to handle the glory of God. We must understand what it is to keep the order. The order must be kept. We cannot have our own mind. We cannot desire our own things and our own ways. And you're wondering, oh, you know, may I think we should, hey, hey, it's 21 days. May I think it should have been 40. Who asked? Keep the order. Keep the order that has been given. You don't bring your mind. You don't bring your flesh. Sanctify it. There is an order. Keep your order. In the army of God, keep your rank. And do what you have been set to do. Then you see later, as they brought in the ark, verse 16 says, And David spoke to the chief of the Levites to appoint their brethren to be singers with instruments of music, psalteries and harps, cymbals, sounding by lifting up the voice with joy. Now we come back to worship. I told you I'm a worship pastor, so everything has to tie back to worship. So now once we know, once we've sanctified, once we've known our place, once we've kept the order, now we can praise freely. Now we can come before his presence with singing. Now we can praise. We cannot praise when we don't know who we are. Once you've kept the order, once you know who you are in Christ, once you know you're standing with God, once you know your place in the house of God, now we can praise. Now we can offer sacrifice of praise because we are living sacrifice. Now we bring our praise and we enter into his courts with thanksgiving and we proceed and we praise him with everything and we reach a place where bless the Lord oh my soul and all oh, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. We cannot live as mere men. We cannot live as if our lives did not know what the word of God says. It is our duty. It is our duty to know the order of God. That we may partake of his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us stand. My time is finished.